So one of the most common questions, I would say one of the most common points when people are ill and what I call like struggling, people are trying to claw out of a hole to get better, to feel better, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, we've all been there, right? Let's clear the air. We've all, we've all been there, right? I think sometimes people think, uh, because I teach her something that I've never been there. I'm a good teacher because I've been there probably more than any of you, <laughs> right? So gotten good at this, just gotten better at knowing how to get out of a hole quicker, right? But what we see when we're working with patients is that one of the biggest challenges to people getting better when they're really bad off is they're confused. And one of the biggest reasons people are confused, and I think this is like a, just the time of human, human reality that we're in right now is people are often sick because of what I call discernment, right? So we live in a time where we have more access to information, news, books we can get ancient textbooks and seconds in our fingertips right we have all of this information overload but the challenge is with discernment is that in my opinion there's more crappy information than ever in history so in the past you know we had textbooks to rely on there might not have been a lot of them, but they were written by typically people who were very wise and practiced and solved thousands of patients over their life. And now we live in an age where anybody can publish a book, an ebook, anything, right? You can get tons of information. However, most of that information that we see is all has an angle, right? It's indirectly or secretly from a supplement company or a drug company, right? I mean, the dietary supplement industry is almost as bad as the pharmaceutical industry, right? Everybody writing articles and, you know, having podcasts and promoting products. And we don't always understand that these people are actually getting paid or making profits in different ways, right? So that's the problem. And then people and family and friends bombard people with information. So the, the number one thing I think we need to have in America right now is just discernment. We have to be able to cautiously evaluate information and try to determine what is good quality info, what is maybe practical info, because a lot of people who, you know, remember fame does not equal credibility, right? Some of the biggest presence online are like young people doing TikToks from their bedrooms, selling herbal products or talking about things they don't have any. I mean, really, that's who like, it's where most young people are getting their information at. So this is like a really important topic that we have to help people navigate. So the more as practitioners or guides or family members, the more we can help people discern and choose information and weed through information, right? The better. It's complicated, right? So sea salt is great, right? Now we know that sea salt is some of the most microplastic contaminated food on earth so okay so is sea salt good or bad right i mean it's a great source of nutrition and trace elements now we have this more information now we have like other data points that say it's one of the most polluted things because it's from the ocean where all the microplastics are more and more concentrated so this is, see the challenge that we have today. So we have to be able to help people discern what information is the most important or not. And this is where we always get back to our 
foundations of our basics, right? Basic theory. Above all else, protect the righteous chief. Is that being met? <laughs> Are they structuring their healing process around this, right? Are people finding balance of body and mind and soul, right? Right? Maybe they're so worried about whether something has microplastics at the expense of every other nutritional concept out there, right? So this is just the time we live in. And I think this is going to be our job as practitioners more and more to make sure we're helping people discern and weed through vast volumes of stuff, right? That makes sense? Um, you know, on one level, it's not different because what we get on the marketplace and the internet is what we used to get in the marketplace of our village or the gossip or the or the different things like that. The only difference yeah. when a stranger comes into town and gives you new information and that kind of thing. It's yeah. just factored by a factor of like thousands more yeah. because of the amount there. But we've always been getting misinformation in our, sure. in our village. And our True. Place. Yeah. And one of the questions is how do you how do you leave space in your brain to accept new information and get rid of old information mm -hmm. that either no longer applies or you've now found to be inaccurate. Right. How do you do that? Yeah. Just like the human heart that supposedly just expands mm -hmm. every time you get a kid or yeah. you so yeah, Paul is saying this is one of the a good point related to discernment is that one of the most important I'm going to paraphrase what he said, one of the most important traits we can have as either patients or practitioners is that are we able to change our own mind about something, right? Or are we too locked in, right? Maybe we're too locked in that sea salt's the greatest thing ever and now we gotta like okay this is some important information what are we gonna do about this or maybe we thought distilled water was the best well distilled water doesn't get microplastics out so now we're back to reverse osmosis water right because that does get the microplastics so are we able to pivot and say okay what we what i thought maybe it wasn't wrong or maybe it was Maybe we just have new info now. Are we able to change things, right? This is also why I always come back to a lot of the basic principles that we keep kind of hammering in this class. Like some of those basic universal truths that are just as true 5,000 years ago as they are today and they'll continue to be 5,000 years in the future. So those are some of the things we can always pivot towards when we get confused or patients get confused, right? So I could tell patients a lot, right? Are you getting protein? Okay, that's important, right? Okay, are you getting five servings of fruits and vegetables a day? Okay, if you're not doing like some of these very basic things, all the other fancier things don't matter, right? So this is our job. This is what we have to do if we're really sick. Or in a bad way or lost, right? This is what we try. This is what counselors help people do, right? Is that person in your life really toxic or not toxic, right? Right? So we have to ask patients the same thing, right? Is this behavior you're doing toxic or not to your lifestyle? Or is it conducive to healing? Or is this person or, right? So it's just important. I think people are getting more and more especially as like fake news and things like that, like intensify people's emotional state. As we move into the age of AI, right? Like I think it's more and more important to think about like discernment and being able to change our opinion about something, right? Right? Maybe something we thought was really bad isn't as bad as we thought, right? We went that way with meat before, right? We're always swinging from the pendulum of everything, right? Meat's horrible, meat's good, you know, back and forth throughout history. So all these different things.
eggs good or bad right yeah there was just this fun like not true study but this one nutrition guy that was getting his phd ate um what it was something insane 12 or 24 eggs a day for like a long period of time and took his blood like every week as part of this as part of his like doctorate work and um actually his cholesterol went down drastically which is like counterintuitive how some piece of information in the past were led to believe that eggs are gonna elevate our cholesterol or but most data now shows it really doesn't elevate cholesterol in most people at all so just good example like being able to just what i call pivot just My, uh... just like a friend right somebody you thought was so awesome also you're like no okay this person is really bad i'm just gonna pivot away yeah. My son and his family, uh, they eat raw meat and um, raw milk and raw cheese. And they get so much flack from so many different people. Mm -hmm. And they've never gotten, I mean, they've been doing it for years and they've sure. never gotten sick. Sure. I mean, they get it fresh from the farm. Sure, so, yeah. But, you know, there's a big misconception about that yeah. whole diet. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. There's just all kinds of things like that. So discernment you know to me looking at information like ancient textbooks that have been used for a long period of time or you know different writings are typically tend to be good sources right so okay that's all i wanted to say about discernment that's just everybody has been thinking about that topic lately so how would you know what is especially with all the information that Mm -hmm. at our fingertips how yeah would you know which information is actually accurate and what is not yeah. when you have data to show work mm -hmm. you get and data to show like, yes perfect. so the question is what if we have conflicting even let's say scientific data points like about eggs or something right i think it goes back to our basic principle of healing that we have to be okay with polarities and dualities because that is the truth that a lot of dualities just simply exist. And, you know, high and low protein diets, you know, like lower protein vegetarian diets, you know, just generally some people excel on them and higher protein, like super high animal protein diets that, you know, even 10 years ago, people would have thought you'd have a heart attack in a day. Some people thrive on that and their cholesterol goes down and all kinds of interesting things happen. But it's to me, it's about individual traits of the constitution. So we have to be okay that there can be conflicting information at times even. And instead of being confused by that, we should say, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> we can have different studies that show completely different things or different people who respond differently. Or some studies that are made only on, ma on males. Just sure. Females. Yeah, or maybe the studies, you know, all kinds of things we could get into with studies, right? Like other people say the consumer claims, so they, the government, the plate, and I'm like, yeah. the, the formula was just, I mean, like everybody is yeah. so different and like it's yeah. such a big system. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. One thing I wish people realized with diet is that that's why I think so many Americans are confused. It's just that everybody is, has an individual constitution. There really is no, there's basic principles of diet that work for everybody that are general rules, but there's still variance within that. And that's why it's kind of hard to talk about a lot of times. I definitely believe in there's a difference between allergies and sensitivities in like learning those are hard that mm -hmm. you can take. Yeah. It really plays a big part of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of like just gathering a lot of information. I, I tend to really like a lot of older writings before there was a lot of products talked about in books you know they just talked about herbs not like products that a company made and that were you know by people who practice and taught in medical schools and I mean, there's yeah a lot of them that i've listed all the you know 
all of the recommended reading that's on your on Thinkific. Those are great sources for books and resources and textbooks. So I just wanted to talk about that for a second. So one other factor of discernment that's really hard is just unconscious bias that we discussed earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like by the def by definition, you don't know you have it. Yeah, I'm very biased. I mean, for example, like when people come in and want to talk about vaccine side effects, I just say I'm very biased because most people that I interact with are patients and they're coming to me for side effects. So like I have, I see it more because that's what's in my world. Um, we all have bias to some degree, right? I have to be willing to accept that. Rather than polio. Yes, yes. That's the one I hope does not come back. This polio is really bad. So, okay, well, let's just stop. Uh, is there any questions online?